James Kaufman, World News Report today. Today is September 17th, 2023, 1 p.m. Central here in the USA. God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. In breaking news, we've had four earthquakes go off, all on top of the Juan de Fuca plate, two with tsunami warnings, all part of the Cascadia subduction system. The biggest of all the quakes was a 5.6 magnitude with an associated tsunami warning. All of the quakes are inside. I guess this one's on the North American plate and the Juan de Fuca plate here. And this is the Pacific plate out here. And the other three are right here within the Juan de Fuca plate which is part of the system of the Cascadia subduction zone, which I will actually explain to y'all in just a second. Here we have a 5-6 with a tsunami warning. Down here we have a 4-3 with a tsunami warning. Again, inside the North American bound plate boundary there. Here we have a 4-5, and they're calling this a 4-1 aftershock. So we've seen Four sizable quakes, all caught up in the Cascadia subduction zone mechanism. And what that mechanism is, and I'm about to show y'all a schematic of it, it is the Juan de Fuca plate here being pushed under the North American plate by the Pacific plate as the Pacific plate expands. This happens all over the globe, but this is one of the worst subduction zones on the globe because we have so much volcanic activity and magma chambers under so many of these mountain ranges like the Cascadia mountain range that runs all the way from the border of the U.S. and all the way down almost to California. Uh, there's a lot of, of active volcanoes here. There's Mount Rainier, Mount St. Helens, Mount Adams, Mount Hood. Uh, a lot more mountains, if you will. This is Mount Olympic right here, another volcano. So this is actually sitting on another volcano. The problem with this plate being pushed under or subsiding under the North American plate is the magma is pushed or forced to the surface and comes out of this volcanic area here, which includes the Snake River caldera here, where Evil Knievel jumped his jet bike. There's the gorge. This area also includes Yellowstone and could include Wawa Spring Shill Volcano and definitely includes Snake River as we talked about. Definitely includes the Cascadias and the Olympia Mountains, another volcanic range. And this goes all the way down to California and picks up on other volcanic ranges. So this is uh, quite a shit show. And to see four major earthquakes or sizable earthquakes, two with tsunami warnings overnight, should wake us all up. Here's a schematic for everyone that doesn't quite yet understand. We have the Juan de Fuca plate right here being subsided or pushed under the North American plate by the Pacific plate here. And that's pushing the magma to the surface of all the volcanoes all the way from the Olympic Mountains through the Cascadia Mountains. They call this the Cascadia Subduction Zone because there's so many volcanoes in the Cascadia Volcanic Range, right? This also would include Snake River. This would also include Yellowstone. So this is a really serious situation. I would call this the most dangerous subduction zone on planet Earth because of the set up here. And they do expect large movement of the Juan de Fuca plate under the North American plate, forcing that magma to the surface, which has happened in the past. All right, let's take a look at these quakes on volcanoes and earthquakes.com. First, the 5-6 came. Uh, you can see it's clearly within the Juan de Fuca plate. I will back up so y'all can see that here. The Juan de Fuca plate is outlined in blue here. This is the North American plate boundary and the Pacific plate boundary. There happens to be a random plate right here that is being pushed or forced under all these volcanoes. This happened in the northern part, which doesn't mean much. Activity is activity. <clears throat> 
These are also all volcanoes, by the way. So we started with a 5-6. We had a 4-3 with another tsunami warning down here. That was followed by a 4-5, and we've just had a 4-1 on top of the 5-6. Three of them are right within the Juan de Fuco. The other one's closer to the North American Pacific plate boundary. Two tsunami warnings, four earthquakes from a 4-1 to a 5-6 just overnight. That energy is going to move southeast into these volcanic areas by this evening. As we will see when I do my live report, we'll go over the actual quakes. Here's the 5-6 actually had a tsunami warning. I don't think we're going to see any buoys in event mode. This was a 5-6 confirmed by the USGS. No one felt it. Only 0.2 atomic bombs worth of energy released with a 5.6. Shows you the difference. Uh, the difference between a 5.6 and a 5.7. The 5.7 earthquake is 10 times stronger than the 5.6. The difference between a 5.0 and a 6.0. The 6.0 is 100 times stronger than the 5.0. It's called the Richter scale. Here we can see only 0.2 atomic bombs worth of energy were released. All right, number two, the second earthquake that rang off of 4.5 also had a tsunami warning associated with it. It also only put out 84.8 tons of TNT, a 4.5, and a reporting service here is the USGS, zero reports, it was offshore. For the first 5-6, we had the USGS come in at a 5-6, the International Research Institute on Seismology, 5-6, Germany, 5-5, five, five, Raspberry Shake, 5-6, five, French, 5-1, Australia, 5-5. Five, five. As far as the 4-5, with a tsunami warning, only the USGS chimed in, period. I would think the Canadian government would also chime in. Next up, our third earthquake, a 4.3 magnitude earthquake. A 4.3 USGS main primary source. Look down here, 42.5 tons of TNT released with this quake. Not huge, but sizable and in a terrible spot. This one did not have a tsunami warning. Only the 5, 6, and 4, 5 had that tsunami warning associated with them. Looking at the modeling agencies, I do see a surprise here. The Germans coming in at a 4.8, much stronger than the USGS came in at a 4.3. Must have been downgraded because Raspberry Shake still has it as a 4.5. International Research Institute on Seismology, a 4.3. So I'm guessing the USGS downgraded this from at least a 4.5 to a 4.3. And it was probably stronger uh, as Germany came in at a 4.8. All right, finally, you can see they're calling this 4.1 an aftershock of the 5.6 quake here. Again, right on top of the 5.6 with a tsunami warning. Also, all on top of the Juan de Fuca plate being pushed under the North American plate. Again, releasing 21.3 tons of TNT. I think this was a bigger aftershock than they're giving it credit for. Came in at a 4-1 primary source, the USGS. On the aftershock, everyone comes in at a 4.1, the USGS, Raspberry Shake, and the International Research Institute on Seismology. I believe them to all be basically the same operation. The great news is there's no tsunami buoy going off. Thus, there was no tsunami created, just a warning. This is the National Data Buoy Center. Before we quickly wrap this up, I also wanted to point out all of these volcanoes on the ocean floor here that are what is making the Pacific Plate Boundary grow and push the Juan de Fuca Plate under North America, the North American Plate, forcing the magma to the surface. And to wrap it up, there we go, folks. This energy should be pushed onshore by this evening. We'll see if that occurs. We can usually make a pretty good call. Let's see if we can get rid of that. They have four 
Earthquake, a 4-1, a 5-6, a 4-3, and a 4-5, all in the Wanda Fuko uh, plate or on the North American Wanda Fuko plate boundary, all part of the Cascadia subduction system. God bless everyone that lives up in the northeast of the U.S. and or the west coast of Canada. This is a very dangerous situation that has been building over time. And eventually it's going to slide quite a bit, forcing a bunch of magma to the surface of these volcanoes. With that said, please share our video, please subscribe, and always remember that anything's possible in Bizarro World.